Hello all. Title of my talk today is Cost Optimization and Need for Refactoring. I will cover some of the pics I have noticed, noticed during the years working with a customer. Some strange echo in my, my head, but let's not let that in, in have any effect to my, to my speech. Okay. My new picture, I took it yesterday because I received some feedback that the old picture was not so good one. Yes, I'm Jali Pieska working as a cloud advisor in Knowit and I'm, I'm four times AWS certified person and I have skills to run AWS well architect reviews for customer workloads. And also I'm AWS Immersion Day Practitioner, meaning that I'm able to run AWS Immersion Days. Yes, that's all for me. And let's start in the beginning what cloud is famous. We all know these buzzy words that it's easy to right size resources in cloud. Cloud is scalable. It's also, it's very easy to use only what you need. You can scale up, you can scale down. It's high availability. If, we, if you build your application or solutions to be high available. Cloud, uh, cloud is resilience, it's safe. Okay, we all know uh, the security shared responsibility model of cloud. Cloud is elastic and it's self-service in that sense and we can do and build applications via API and without needing to order servers or anything like this. I bet this is a very uh, typical situation or typical thing in many cases that still cloud costs are high and they are increasing all the time. And this usually makes management not happy. There exists the management pressure and they are, like I mentioned, they are not happy at all. And it can be a situation that uh, cloud was originally sold to them as a cheaper option and still costs are high and they are increasing all the time. I have a question, why? Why is this happening? That's a good question. Uh, hopefully I can give some answers and hints how to overcome this issue during my talk today. Okay. Reasons for cost increase. I think this is very typical situation when we are building something, especially for customer. There exists a the time pressure and that leads to the situation that there exists trust in all over the places. We need to develop things fast, and when we move fast, we leave trust all over the places. We create a POC1, POC2, we do some debugging, testing, whatever. And then we have this erroneous thinking that, okay, when the project is over and it is in the production, then we do the cleaning and we will clean the house and that's a lie. That, that seldom happens. And when the project is closed or almost closed, the money is usually used and there is no time or budget to do cleaning. When we are moving hard, uh, fast, we have time pressure, we create technical depth. This is, this is normal. Uh, and when we create technical depth, this usually means more trash. We may have a legacy way of working, meaning that we do click ops instead of DevOps. Uh, well, at some sense, I like click ops. It's, it's nice. I, it has a point in, or it has a place in, in, in time to do so. Uh, 
in many cases, there doesn't exist ownership or clear ownership of things, applications, projects. Uh, this is quite common common feature. And if no one owns the pieces of infrastructure or the application, then people, developers think that it is John Doe that is responsible of this ownership, but well, he doesn't have it. So if no one have it, then ball is in the floor and the game stops and yeah, this will generate increase, will, this will increase the costs. And quite many times when, when I'm working with a customer, especially in the brownfield customers, but then they have started their cloud journey a long time ago, they have started with a one, one AWS account with one region, one VPC, and everything is in the same basket. Same AWS account. And you can imagine that there exist uh, years and years of work done in the, <clears throat> in the one, one AWS account that there exists a huge amount of resources, security groups, EC2 instances, RDS, whatnot, living, uh, living there peacefully, generating bill, and usually no one knows what these are. Can we delete, decommission it? No one knows. And of course, when you have a lot of resources, it's quite difficult to see what is generating the, the cost. You can see that, okay, AWS config is generating a big bill. Okay, then you need to deep dive deeper to understand in which part or which applications are generating the AWS config costs. Same with the CloudWatch logs or CloudWatch costs. Okay. There exist tools in the AWS to do cost optimization. Okay. I have divided these to the two, at least two different categories, normal and uh, advanced, I think, <clears throat> but we will see later. Okay. Normal optimization tools you can, we can use, for example, savings plan. This is good if you have steady state cloud compute costs. You have big easy to instances, RDS, you can make reservation and, and or buy saving plans and reduce the cost. There was, oh, still are reserved instances, still good. It's not so flexible as savings plan, but it is also a good option if you have very steady state uh, environment and uh, you need, uh, for example, or you are running big, big EC2 instances. Well, the previous talk was about serverless, but those servers still exist in the AWS cloud. AWS has a tool called Cost Explorer. It gives you ability and visualize and understand and manage your AWS cost and usage over time. You can quickly create custom reports that analyze cost and usage data. It gives you an opportunity to deep, dive deeper your cost and usage to identify trends and uh, what might be causing the cost. And uh, it can even detect anomalies in, in your in your in your, in your bills. There is a possibility to create budget, uh, budget alarms. Uh, if you don't have budget alarms in place at the moment, I suggest to do so. Uh, especially if you are responsible and doing ops, like, like I'm doing in quite many cases, and you will sleep, you sleep your nights better knowing that there will be not big surprises at the end of the month. It's better to notice them soonest than later at the end of the month that, okay, we have spent rest of the year budget and it's only April at the moment. It, it also has a forecasting option that it is trying to forecast what will be the cost at the end of the month. So it's, it's, uh, it is comparing the cost at the moment to the cost that 
was in the previous month and trying to trying to do forecasting. Sometimes it's quite irritating, especially if you have very strict strict uh, limits for your budget alarms, or you have steady steady bills. Then at, at the beginning of the month, usually when the taxes come, the forecasting is not working properly, and you will get a false alarm and. And then usually service desk is, like, is telling you that we do not want to have these kind of alarms, do something. And the easiest way is just to raise the alarm limit a little bit. Not too much, but little. Then there exists cost anomaly detection. Uh, you can reduce costs cost to prices and uh, enhanced control of cost of anomaly detection and uh, it it's leverages machine learning technologies to identify anomalies in spend and even trying to find out root causes so you can quickly take actions based on those suggestions. This will give us builders more freedom to build and uh, we can let the cost anomaly detection monitor the spend and reduce the risk of billing surprises, because billing surprises is the things that we don't want to see. And even we can do anomaly detection even in the in the service level. So meaning that if you have, uh, for example, a serverless application, you just with big amount of lambdas, then you can uh, just turn it on for the lambdas. In the beginning. I, in the keynotes, uh, or, or was it in Rolf's talk, there was a mention that we should tell war stories, failures. I have also one failure case. We all know that lambdas do not cost much. First million are free and then almost nothing costs the rest of the lambdas. But I've been seeing a situation where there was a human error in configuration and uh, and the estimation of lambda costs at the end of the month was about 150,000 euros per month. Usual spent for lambdas was a couple of hundreds during that time. It was a human error. During that time we didn't have budget alarms and we know it ran there a couple of days, generated eight to 9,000 euros bill during that month. But uh, we noticed that other lambdas started to throttle and it, they didn't <laughs> succeed. And, and there, there, there was a, diff, a very unpeticular behavior of the application. So I suggest use the budget alarms. You will sleep safer or better, not safer, sorry. Nice tool. I mentioned also that I like ClickOps. Well, I visited AWS console daily base. Nowadays, there exists this console widget for uh, budget and spend. It is listing or it is telling you that, okay, you are doing better than last month. 5% smaller, smaller bill is coming for this month than last month. And it is listing, I think, five, five biggest... Uh, uh, services that are generating the biggest bill. And every time when you open the AWS console, you can see the bill, uh, you, you can see the costs. One option for cost optimization tool is to use cost calculator. Whenever you are going to build a new application or new, uh, new, new, new application to AWS, you can use AWS Cost Calculator. It's a handy tool to approximate how much it will cost to run your application. Okay, it might be a tricky one to use, especially in many cases you need to approximate the number of traffic or, ne or how much traffic it will, it will get because the, bill, uh, the, the usage is... is uh, the, the network traffic is also uh, uh, is part of the uh, part of the build, but it it can be 
it can be to give a, some kind of approximation because management is always asking how much this will cost and if you say that okay something between 100 to 1000 it's not strict enough approximation and architect your applications cost in mind okay Second approach to me, uh, cost optimization is uh, using advanced tools, well, re-architecture or re-architecting. Uh, there is always an option to use re-architecturing. Uh, this, in my opinion, this approach should be used more often. And this is the case that usually, like I mentioned earlier, that when the application is done, then the budget is done and there is no no, no possibility to re-architecting. And of course, we all are, or many of us are following the rule that if it works, don't touch it. But the biggest savings uh, I have seen and we have received is doing the things with the re-architecture. We have generating, like it was in the Jimmy's talk in a little earlier that he was explaining the IoT, IoT system and he first introduced his, the, the original one and it turned out that it worked, it worked properly. But then when the number of devices increased 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, 1000 times, it became quite expensive architecture. So, so they created a new architecture and improved the situation and make it better and, and more cheaper. And this is always a good question in mind to think that, okay, how about, okay, now, now we have this kind of costs, but what happens if, uh, the co uh, if the usage will increase 10 times, 100 times or 1000 times, what will happen to the costs? Are they increasing dramatically or are they quite steady? I cannot emphasize enough that follow costs regularly. Do some kind of year clock approach, even daily, but at least weekly, monthly, quarterly, half a year. But depending on, on, on the applications and, the, and what processes you have, but I, I suggest to use year clock approach and do it regularly. Create a Jira ticket for this. Okay, after this sprint, we need to check costs, for example. Visualize costs. Very often, we builders, we do not see costs. We do not see bills, we are not paying the bills, especially if we are doing something for the customer. And it might be the case that if, if someone else is paying the bill, we do not, well, it's quite rough to say that we don't care about costs, but if you don't see it, it doesn't make, make, make your heart burn. Okay, just curiosity, let's make a quick poll. Raise your, raise your hand if you are following cloud costs daily or uh, daily of, for your application or infrastructure. Okay. The situation is even bad, <laughs> worse than I expected. I, I was, when we were discussing with colleagues yesterday and uh, I make an approximation that 50, 50, 60 will be the number, but no, it's about 5%. So visualize costs. Usually <laughs> put it beside your CI CD tool. That's a tool that you are looking daily, I guess. And for example, in, in the big television like this, you can just put one tab that it is showing the cloud cost or showing the cost for your applications. Okay. To support visualization, you need to do cost stacking. Okay, this is quite uh, quite obvious okay someone would should uh, could say that 
checking is like nagging, but it will help you to, co to understand costs better. Okay, uh, it's all cost, uh, cost optimization is also sustainability. It has also sustainability aspect that Werner Vogel stated in reInvent 2012, so more than 10 years ago, that don't forget to turn off lights. Little similarly, uh, Peter DeSantis mentioned a couple of years ago that the greenest energy is the energy you don't use. And just an example of, of mitigating costs, you can use Graviton processor family. It supports nowadays EC2, RDS, Elastic Cache, Lambda, Fargate, EMR Open Search. It performs better and it is cheaper than the Intel, Intel or AM, ADM uh, processors. Okay, but some things to remember, do not optimize pennies. Start with those big boys that are generating the biggest bills. Adapt new ways of working. Well, this is quite obvious, I think. We are not doing click-ups, but avoid trash. That's, that's in mind. If you don't need the development environment, create a system that will uh, turn down the development environment off during the nights and uh, weekends and holiday seasons. Architect your applications with cost in mind, clean trash, Actively, don't let, uh, don't let uh, unneeded infrastructure lying there in AWS accounts. Use meaningful tags. Maybe the biggest or the most important tag is the owner tag. Who is the owner of this application, this piece of infrastructure? And remember, if you are not tagging properly, someone is snacking. Okay, management support. Get the management support for cost optimization. This is the hardest thing to get, but when you get it, it's then you have a backbone to, to, to do the cost optimization. And one, one director once told me that, okay, I only remember that IT budget is very stable. We have a certain amount of money. If we save money from this current current application and current version, we can spend the same money to create something new. And in many cases, this is a cultural thing. You need to build a culture for cost savings, that all, all of the developers, all of the management and all whole team is working towards that we are, we are creating uh, uh, our infrastructure uh, very wisely and, and cost optimal way. And like mentioned, try not to do this kind of huge accounts that have everything in one account. Okay, this will make the those big boys very small and small money and the optimization say optimization could be harder, but it will make your life easier because you can see better what is causing the costs and and such. Okay, a couple of things to take with you. Do not, do not let left running what do you do not need. Decommission all, all the infrastructure and applications you do not need. And because you have developed something, either it is easy to container, RDS, Lambda, decommission it by yourself. Do not leave it to the ops. Very crucial because, well, I've been in situations that we have decommissioned Lambda that was handling authentication and, well, we created a major incident and it took more than one day to, to solve it. It was quite a big. That was something that developers has done and, uh, well, no one knew it was very old Lambda and no one knew what was it and we decommissioned it and uh, then we had a major incident. So if you do not use it, decommission it. Do not use extra resources, use right sizing, remove not needed resources, follow costs regularly and do the cleaning of the infrastructure, visualize costs. And 
like I started, use the best things that cloud is famous. Run infrastructure effectively, effectively and wisely. Do not waste resources. We have only one Earth. We cannot spoil it. And concentrate on the low-hanging fruits. Think if FinOps is a tool for you. It can be costly. So in some cases it's not suitable, in some cases it is suitable, but I think, yeah, that was my first, last slide. Thank you.